So I was there two weeks, and the time that I was there, I was going out, y'all, every <laughs> night after rehab. I was like going out on the town. I was making friends. I was on dating apps, like meeting up with people. Ain't like I was life. getting my whole life, and I was telling my therapist, and they were like, "Oh, that's so dope!" Like you know, I was just living my life, and so, um, but I would come back to therapy tired. I was shit. And they were giving me warnings, like, you know, they called me to the office, like, you know, you can't be missing therapy, you have to. And I was just like, okay, I'm going to get it together. But I was like, my stomach was fucked up because I was like, I was, I was a vegetarian at that time, too. But when I was in Atlanta, I was eating everything, like me, and it was just fucking me up. And so I would not be able to get to therapy. And so final straw, um, I was in aquatic therapy, got out of therapy, and they called me to the office. And they were like, you've been missing too much, you got to go home. Like you're done. You, you got to let it go. 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 Welcome back to the More Life Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin. And I'm Cassie. And today we got a very special guest that we're bringing on to the podcast, Kimberly Rose. Welcome. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Hi, Kimberly. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm doing okay, y'all. How are y'all doing? Doing good. Are you excited to be on the podcast today? Yeah, I'm yeah. really pumped up. I'm excited to meet you guys. I've been seeing y'all's videos, Thank y'all's you. content. Y'all are killing it. Thank you. So um, I'm definitely excited to meet mm -hmm. you guys and talk for mm -hmm. sure. Thank you. Thank and, you so much. And I just want to say how I came across your Instagram and a little bit about you was from Nicole. She actually, she shared your profile with me and she shared Brianna's profile with me. She said, you know what? Mm -hmm. You need to get these two women on your podcast. Like, they're so dope. You need to get them on there. So I reached out and here we are. Oh. So. Yes. Shout out to Nikki. Okay. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. That's yes. right. That's what we're talking about. We empower each other, helping each other out. Mm -hmm. You're not hating. I love it. Yes. yes we, I love we, it. we actually met them. Was it last month or this month? Yes, it was at the end of July. Yes, we met them at the Rolex experience. We went up I there. I saw that. Yes. Yeah. And it was so I was on, dope. Yes, I was on your stage and I saw the pictures. And I was like, oh, you guys met each other. That is so cool. Yeah. That's real dope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, well, I can't speak for women, but mm -hmm. I would just recommend you being a woman. Trust me, the Rolex experience was amazing. So if you ever get the chance, yeah. try to go. Yeah. I wanted to go. I wanted <laughs> to, honey, but it seemed like the coins aren't there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Time, mm -hmm. You know? Okay. Um, but I'm going to get there one day. One day yeah, I'm going to make it, even though I'm not a dancer, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, I think it would be yeah, it, it was. It was. It was definitely something that I felt like that I needed to see. You know, yeah. so, you know, like just seeing all like all these women in wheelchairs just killing it, like just yeah. just seeing everybody just really having a good time, just seeing everybody mm -hmm. going back and forth. Like it was it was really a sight to see. And it was something that I feel like, you know, like not only as a man, but as a as a wheelchair user myself, I needed to see that, you know, yeah. because yeah. yeah, it was it was very inspiring. Like the whole thing, how they had it set up. It was it was it was really nice. It was really Everybody oh, that's awesome! Were you the only guy there? The, pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Yes, I was. But we only went down there to meet Ashley and Nikki. Yeah, that's the only. Oh, really? Yes, that's the only reason why we went down there. And then Brianna was down there, so we had literally yeah. just did a podcast with Brianna. So then you know she yeah. she introduced us to to Brianna, and then they got us into the Rolex experience. Yeah, we met a lot of other. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, we all live far away from LA. We live about less than two hours, maybe like an hour 45, two hours oh, from L.A., yeah. depending on tra traffic, because okay. traffic is crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah I've not too far. Traffic. Yeah. Yeah. I've been there one time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, but it's not bad, because we're always in L.A. anyway, so it's not like, you know, yeah. it's a it's a pain to get down there. You know, we always go down there. The drive is nice. Yeah. It's a nice drive. So, so do y'all live, live near, um, well, I guess if you're an hour or so from L.A., y'all wouldn't be near, like, San Francisco, right? We are four hours south four. of San Francisco. Okay. Yeah. So we live kind of like in the middle of California, okay. like yeah. Central Valley, California. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in the middle okay. Of okay. Got you. And then like going south. That's not 
Oh, no, we're from, we're, I don't know how far Palm Spring is, but we're a couple hours from Palm Springs. Okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah. I like where we live because we can travel literally anywhere and not be, it's not too crazy. Um, But yeah. yeah, Don't go to Vegas if you wanted to. Right. Yes. Everywhere is like a four hour distance. Yes. San Diego. Yeah, so Vegas is four and a half. Uh, San Diego is four and a half. Vegas four and a half. I have a good, I have a a homeboy. He lives in, um, near Oakland. Okay. okay. Yeah, and um, I've been trying to get out there, and so mm-hmm. I'm going to fly out there and visit, and I want to go to Napa. You know what I'm talking oh, about? Yeah, yeah, Napa okay. Valley. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Have y'all gone to Napa? No, not yet. No, but I want not to. Yet. I want to go to, like, a winery out there type of thing. <laughs> Do you like a little wine right. trip? I know. Wine tasting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Fancy. <laughs> I've been saying, right. I mean, it might seem boring to some people, but I think it seems kind of fun. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's definitely mm-hmm. fun. Um, all right, so uh, to our channel, Kimberly, if any, nobody really knows who you are, so let us know a little bit about yourself, where you're from, you, you know, your, you just anything fun about you, fun facts, and yeah. uh, what you do. Okay. Okay. Oh, my bad. Sorry, I got my dog on my lap. <laughs> oh, no, it's okay. fine. It's fine. A little bit about me. Okay, so my name's Kimberly. I go by Kimberly Rose on Instagram. Okay. okay. Um, I am from Houston, born and raised. I'm a Texas girl. Um, what else is my age? I'm 31, and I'm not ashamed of it. I'll be 32 actually in um like three months. Okay. So yeah, man, time's flying. God. When's your um, birthday? Real quick. When's your birthday? November second. I'm a Scorpio. Okay. Ooh. Me too. That makes us two. My birthday's November okay. 18th. <laughs> hey, you said the 18th? Yes. Okay, girl. Hey, Scorpio. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, Scorpios um, so, is something else. Wait, one more time? I said, yeah, Scorpios is something else. Oh, I know. I know, honey. <laughs> we definitely are. Um, what was I going to say? So, more about me. I was in a car accident when I was 18. Um, I was going, I was in college. And what happened was I was with some of my, not my roommate, but some of my dorm mates. We went to a football game, and uh, we didn't make it to the game. We decided um, we're going to go back to campus and just kick it till we didn't make it back to campus. Um, those details, I'm not really sure what happened, but I just know I woke up in the hospital. Um, I broke my neck, and they told me that I wasn't going to walk, and um, I'm a quadriplegic. So, yeah, and I, I broke my neck at the C7 level. So yeah, uh, C seven quadriplegic. Um, so to the listeners, I am not able to move my leg. And I have limited um, function in my hands. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, but after that happened, uh, I went to rehab. Did a little bit of rehab in Houston, in Atlanta. First Atlanta, the Shepherd Center. I don't know if you're familiar. I was supposed to go the- there, but some politics yeah. caused me not to be able to go. So. The politics. Yes, the politics. I won't ask the details. Yeah. To to be honest, I really can't even give you the details. It was just politics, honestly. It was just politics. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe some insurance stuff or something. No, 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 it wasn't that. It was just something with the military and like the. It was. It it, it was just a whole ordeal. So it was just like. Oh, got you. Yeah. No, I got Shepherd Center was good. I had um, an incident happen at Shepherd. Maybe I'll share that later. It's pretty crazy. I actually got kicked out of Shepherd. Oh, Um, for real. Yeah, I got kicked out, but I've never actually told that story before. I was ashamed, like, oh. <laughs> but um, that was, like, years later when I went yeah. back to, to rehab, but um, I can share that story later. Okay. But um, so I initially went to rehab in Atlanta, did rehab there, loved the Shepherd Center, mm-hmm. went back home and did some more rehab in Houston, just rehab, rehab, you know, for years. Yeah. I'm, like, speaking up the story. Mm-hmm. Um, did rehab, and then um, a year later... Um, my mom was like, you're you going to do something. You're not going to be in bed. Yeah. So I went to college um, and did, just finished college at uh, 20, 28, actually. So mm-hmm. I spent my 20s basically going to school, mm-hmm. um, finished my, uh, my bachelor's degree, finished my master's, and then I work now. I'm a That's beautiful. Therapist. Congratulations yeah. on yeah. graduating because not Thank everybody you. finish finishes, you know. Okay. Okay, so yes. we got so we got three degree holders in the room right now. Okay, <laughs> yeah, okay. But she got, yeah, yes. okay, yeah. I graduated when I was twenty eight as well, so I'm thirty one, just like you. I'll be thirty two in like a week and a half. So okay, yeah, not a, I'm not, 
Yeah, I'm 31 as well, so I'm yes. not ashamed. Of, I'm a Virgo, so August 31st. Virgo. Yeah. Are so you, so. you turning 32? Yep, I'll be September. 32. So yeah, so we both born in 1990. Yeah. Did I? Did you graduated high school 09? Yep, we both graduated high school. We in all 09. graduated in 09. Well, well, <laughs> well I was suppo- I was supposed to graduate 08. Because my birthday, because where I'm from, my birthday falls like two days before school started, mm-hmm. right? So then, yeah. I, so then I started school like right early. So you got an extra year off, pretty much, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So pretty much, I started school early, but then I ended up failing the fifth grade because I ain't do no work. So my mom helped mm-hmm. me back. Yeah. 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 There's she, a lot of kids these days uh, going to school at home and the COVID, they're not ready for the next grade. That's a lot of kids. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's when, crazy. Oh, yeah, crazy. I was going to ask. So when you were 18, you were in college. What college did you, were you at? Um. So when I was 18, I went off to school in Nashville. Oh, um, Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. I was uh, going to school at Fisk University. It's an HBCU. Okay. Um, so historical black college for people right. who don't know. Yeah. And or university. Right. Um, and so my parents had dropped me off there. I was gone for about two weeks. And then um, they got the call. They were like, you know, your daughter's in action to come. Oh my so, gosh. yeah, I was only gone for two weeks. And then the right. accident happened. So. Yeah. yeah and, okay. and you know what? Let me not forget. I did a little bit of rehab at, um, and not rehab. I was in the hospital at right. Vanderbilt. Like outpatient. So okay. I was there, too. Yeah. Let me not forget that. Okay. Um, but, yeah, so I went to Fisk University. But I didn't finish. I, I had my accident. So my parents brought me back home, mm-hmm. and I did um, community college. So okay. Community, man, they really helped me with my confidence. Like mm-hmm. I started from the very beginning. Yeah. You know, my college experience. I had to learn how to make friends again. Like mm-hmm. all of that. And yeah. so I restarted everything, going to community college mm-hmm. for like two years, mm-hmm. and then um, then I went to University of Houston in, in Houston, mm-hmm. and then um, I finished. My last school that I went to was in Hampton, Virginia. So oh, I went yeah. to University. Okay. I'm actually so. from Virginia, so okay. You are shut up. Yeah, yeah. I was born I was born in Hopewell, Virginia. So Yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. Where is where is that in Virginia? Is that close to Hampton? Mm, have you ever been to Richmond or Chesterfield, Petersburg? Richmond, mm-hmm. is it okay. Northern Virginia? Um, I you know what, to be honest, I really can't even tell you. It's been so long. Like I moved when I was fourteen. Yeah. And we moved to Georgia, mm-hmm. and then and yeah. that's kind of where I consider myself growing up at because you know I was able to drive out there, so I learned the streets out there. I didn't learn the streets in Virginia, so okay, yeah, so. okay, okay. Now, whenever your accident happened, did you go home or did you go straight to the Shepherd Center? Um, I never went home. I, I went uh, from Vanderbilt. I went to the uh, Shepherd Center. Okay, so, so I was there. For, uh, okay, so how was that for you? Because first you were in Nashville. And then you go to Atlanta, and you're from Texas. So how was yeah. that for you and your family? Because I know that that could get costly. Like, like how was that for you and your family? I mean, my mom never went back to work. She immediately told her job, you know, my daughter can't walk. She's been in a traumatic accident. Right. You know, I cannot go to work. So uh, my mom never left my side. And uh, her job actually allowed her to work remotely. So yeah. and she had like a, she worked at Hewlett Packard, so she was working in IT. So you know they only need to be on site. Yeah. And so, um, thankfully, my mom was there with me. I mean, in my mind, I was still a kid, so I was thinking like Atlanta. You know, not really thinking, yeah. bro. Like, what you gonna do in Atlanta? Yeah. What are you doing? yeah. But my friends were like, "You're going to Atlanta? What? You know, they weren't even thinking like, you know, yeah. not gonna do it. You know, it, it didn't process like that. I was right. still just in that mindset of like, this is gonna be over with. So. Mm-hmm. Um, even that part didn't click for a long, long time, you know, because yeah. um, I thought it, you know, even even when I got to the separate center, I will never forget, um, I sent me to my room and then like a group of wheelchair people came in there. Mm-hmm. It was guys. And um, they were like, hi. And I was like, what are you guys doing here? Like, I don't, I'm not like y'all. Get yeah. up out of here. You know, I really didn't even want to connect with them. Like that, yep, you know, same. like I just thought I was different yeah. than them. And um, that really didn't really, making friends, other, with making friends with other people in wheelchairs was difficult for me. Mm-hmm. That wasn't something that was just natural. Like there's some people who um, automatically just take to it. Yeah, take to They're it. Fine. Yeah, exactly. Like, I like, me, not I like Brianna Rose on it. Like to me, hearing her story, it felt like she took to it. You know, exact mm-hmm. exactly what you said is what I went through. I went to, mm-hmm. like like I like I looked at them as like no nah, no nah, we not the same. 
Like, and I don't know why. I guess I just didn't want to. I guess I just really kind of didn't want to see anybody in a wheelchair because then it just reminded me that I was in a wheelchair. So I could definitely relate to you when it comes to that. And looking back on it right now, it was one of the biggest mistakes that I ever did. Like it was, it oh, was, it, it was really a huge mistake because I would have learned things from them that the physical therapist and occupational therapist couldn't teach me. You know, and Absolutely. you could only really learn those from other wheelchair users. You know, like yeah. just just like tips and tricks, games, all like like game, all that, like, and that's what you need. Yeah. But then, but then I can also understand. You know, you're a female, a bunch of guys come in a room. It's it, it's different. Yeah, it, it, yeah. yeah it's tough. but it's even tough. girls too. Honestly, like even yeah. like I remember. Um, like two years later, I mm-hmm. went back for like phase two. I don't know if you're familiar, no. um, where you just kind of want to be more independent. Okay. So I, I voluntarily went back to the hospital because mm-hmm. I was learning how to pass. I was learning how to do my own bowel program. Yeah. Right. And so when I went back into the hospital, there was a girl who was Miss, Miss Wilshire Texas. And she was talking to me and she was trying to get me interested in, in uh, running for Miss Wilshire Texas in the future. And I was like, no, thank you. You know, and she wanted to be my friend. And I just was so against being yeah. friends with her. I regret it so much. She's, she's one of my good friends now. But at the yeah. time, I was like, girl, don't even talk to me. I don't yeah. know you. You know, I don't want to know you. Um, and I hate that I was like that. But um, she, she understood because she gave me her card and was like, call me when you're ready. And I called her like three years later. And she was like, wow. it's fine. Like, you know, she totally understood it. Yeah. But um, I just was not ready to be her friend. I didn't want to be friends with anybody in wheelchairs, yeah. um, sadly. And all of my friends were able-bodied. Yeah. So, yeah. And um, that was difficult, too, because they didn't understand. And, and I remember um, wanting to talk about what I was going through with them, and they just didn't understand. Mm-hmm. And, and they, frankly, didn't really care. Yeah. Um, and so I had to deal with being left out of situations with them. And, mm-hmm. Like, I remember being at home, and um, a group of my friends came to visit and I was like, what y'all doing when y'all leave? And they were like, nothing, you know, you just go, go home. And I remember getting on Facebook and they were in New Orleans. And they went, and I was like, dang, like they didn't even talk to me about it, you know? Yeah, and um, right. they didn't even include me. And I just remember feeling so left out and yeah. didn't have anybody to talk to that really understood. Yeah. And so I just would keep a lot to myself. And I felt like school was my refuge. I just went to school to get my mind off of it. And that's just like, well, you know, you're not going to fool me. That's fine. Like, I'm going to do my own thing. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. So that's one thing that we also don't get to hear a lot of is people going to college in a wheelchair. How was that experience for you? How was it meeting new people? How was it going to class? Like, how was that overall experience for you? Because you said you got paralyzed two weeks into college. So pretty much you pretty much had to go through your whole college experience in a wheelchair. How was that for you? Yeah. Um, it was difficult. Mm-hmm. And looking back, I wish I had gone to school with the mindset that I have now. Like, yeah. I don't care what you think, but I did care. And I didn't go to a lot of things. Um, not until probably towards the end, I made yeah. friends with somebody who um, really made me feel a part of things. Mm-hmm. And there were probably like three people that I met in college that really changed like my social life and yeah. my self esteem. But in the beginning, it was hard. I was just latching on to anybody that wanted to be my friend. People that, like, frankly, I probably would not have been friends with mm-hmm. had I not been in a wheelchair. Like, one of my first friends is, like, an older woman that was, like, 55 in yeah. college. And she was like, come on, honey, let me hold your book. Let me go to, you know, Aww. let's go eat together. And I was just like, okay. Like, I'm 18, hanging out with her. But she was my friend. She would, like, speak for me. Right. And I remember, like, one of my teachers being like, can she talk? Like, about, you know, because... I wasn't talking. I was just letting her do everything. Um, And I was just friends with anybody. And just Mm -hmm. people that I probably, I know I wouldn't have been friends with. Not, you know, judging them, but just personality-wise. Yeah. It's it's relatable. It's relatable. Yeah. I just wanted friends. Mm -hmm. I just wanted friends. And so, um, but as I uh, continued on with school, um, I met one girl. She was actually a note taker of mine. So, because I had difficulty writing, so she would take my notes. And so we ended up being best friends. Like, we are still best friends to this day. And she really changed my life. Because she was just like, um, she opened up to me about, you know, her dating life and what she was going through. And we ended up sharing stuff. And she was like, girl, I'm going to set you up on your first date. You know, and she set me up with a guy. And, you know, she, uh, what did she do? She reserved a room at a hotel for us. And, like, she got me back into doing things that, you know, I would have been doing at that age. Yeah. And she yeah. took me on my first road trip away from my parents, and she would help cast me 
and so she really changed my life wow, and she would amazing. drive me places and we got on our first airplane she took me to vegas and like she didn't see me as a wheelchair girl and even though she was able-bodied mm-hmm. she didn't have to hang out with me That's you know great. but yeah i know and i like well, I'm like why am i getting emotional Stop i know this. i'm getting emotional but, That's a beautiful friend right there like right and now it's like the roles have reversed now because now she's dealing with her own stuff like yeah. And so I'm able to now go to her house and pick her up and mm-hmm. take her places and help her. And it's, it's a really beautiful thing. But anyway, um, she was a really good friend of mine that really helped me with my confidence, like more than she would ever, mm-hmm. you know. And so there, there were people like that in college that I did meet that yeah. did help me with that. Another girl that I met, um, she got me going to college parties. And, mm-hmm. you know, I wasn't going to that on my own, but it was because of her that I was going out. So I did meet a few people along the way that helped me, but it was difficult. Yeah. It, it was. Yeah. It, it was difficult to do on my own. Yeah. But I got there. Is but there? Just, yeah. uh, go ahead. I was going to, sorry for butting in, but it was, is there any advice you would give other people who are watching, who are in a chair, going to college? Is there anything also maybe that you would have told yourself that you would tell your younger self now, like, oh, I, maybe I should have did this more? Or, you know, just yeah. advice for anybody new to college in a chair. Or about to go to college. Yeah. Also. About to go to college. I would say, um, I mean, it's really difficult to say, just, just put yourself out there, you know, speak up for yourself. But you just yeah. telling somebody, you know, hey, I struggle with this. You, you would never know how people would just care about you and how, how people want to yeah. help. You know what I mean? You just got to let people in and tell them. And people aren't going to be as scared as you think they are. A lot of times I would just be fearful about telling people, hey, I use catheters, or hey, because I, I didn't want them to judge me. Or, and you know, a lot of the times once I opened up and said it, they'd be like, okay, whatever. You know, you just, just tell people things. And don't be afraid to be a part of stuff. I think a lot of times I would tell myself in my head, like, you don't want to hang out with me. Like, why am I even going to this social event on campus? Like, there's all just going to stare. I'm sure they're going to stare. Yeah. Once they stare, I, I always tell myself too, like people have short attention spans. They'll look at you and then they're just going to think about themselves like five seconds later. Mm-hmm. And plus, like, wouldn't you stare at something that's different in the room? Like if you're in a room full of women and a guy walks in, I mean, we're all going to look at the guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because right. it's just different. But mm-hmm. after a few seconds, we're just going to go off and talk about whatever the fuck else, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's what I would tell myself. And that's what I want people that are going to college, people that are in college to just remember that it doesn't matter that you're different. Just be a part of it. And you don't know who you're going to meet once yeah. you put yourself in that situation. And I just wish I had, like, gone to more stuff yeah. and just not limited myself. You know, because yeah. that's what we do sometimes. Like, not other people, but we do it to ourselves. Yeah. You exactly. know what I mean? Like, we tell ourselves, like, we just talk ourselves out of so many things. And that's what I would just do. I would just go to my dorm because I lived on campus. Mm-hmm. And I would just go to my dorm after class and I'd just be with myself. I'd, like, yeah. hear people in class talking about, like, oh, we're going to go here, we're going to go there. And I'd just be in the back, like, mm-hmm. Like, I wish I could be invited. And, like, no, like, if I'd gone back to school, no, I would not, like, butt in and be like, hey, can I come? I yeah. wouldn't do that. Yeah. But, like, maybe I would visit the school cafeteria more. Yeah. Maybe go to the library. Or maybe just join things, you know? Mm-hmm. And I wish I had just done more of that. More of what I wanted to do. Just fuck what other people would think. Just yeah. go for it. That's okay, well, okay, so while you were in college, did you come across a lot of the things that weren't wheelchair accessible? Like maybe like like dorm rooms, the bathrooms, classrooms, like d- d- classrooms fit- for sure. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ramps for sure. Ramps were tough. Ramps were really really hard. And yeah. I mean, a lot of the times, a lot of um, my embarrassment was because my parents. I didn't drive at all. I didn't drive at all in college, and so my parents would be like sitting outside waiting for me in the car, mm-hmm. or like if I couldn't get up a ramp, they would come to the school campus and push me up the ramp in front of like all the kids walking around and I'd like, have my dad there yeah. you know um, that was embarrassing but um, yeah I had some difficulty I, I, I really did um, but they have the disability center mm-hmm. on campus okay. which was helpful for me so they assigned me a note taker they gave me extra time because my you know my hands were impaired so I had double time on tests um, what else and even, even if I probably, probably if I said I needed help up a ramp or if I needed somebody to carry things for me, I'm sure they probably would have assigned somebody. I didn't even think about that accommodation. But, um, but yeah, I had some problems. Like, even desk, I would have to um, basically write on my lap. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have, like, my own desk in a lot of the classes. Now, some classes had tables, and I was yeah. okay there. But, like, for the desk, 
I would just be in the very front and I would hate being in the front yeah. because doing weight shifts, I would always be like, as soon as you move, people are like, are you okay? She's are you going to fall? And yeah. I would just be sitting there like, I'm going to move so bad. Uh-huh. Like, I don't want them to look. So I'd just be like, I'd just move around real quick or uh-huh. like stretch to like get my weight shift. So, I mean, a lot of that stuff is just things that I wish I had just ignored because shot him over your wrist and a wound. Yeah. Caring about what people think, you know exactly. what I mean? Like, exactly. Exactly. So yeah, I mean that kind of stuff. I I wish I didn't care so much, but I did. You know, I, yeah. I cared a lot when I was in school about what other people were thinking. And I mean, I was young. You know, that that happens yeah. at that age. So yeah. I mean, it's just you just gotta keep putting yourself out there yeah. for the young people that are watching. You just gotta keep trying, and, and it's easy to say don't care, yeah. but you truly just have to practice all the time. You're doing your wishes now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you just gotta you just gotta practice it. Put it in to practice all the time. Just trying. Just I don't know when you want to do something, you don't have to just necessarily just do it right away. But just yeah. like say, okay, well I'm going to talk to one new person. You know, like take little steps towards yeah, it. Right. You don't have to like exactly. go all the way. Just like say I'm gonna talk to somebody in class. I'm gonna introduce myself to somebody. You know, mm-hmm. I'm going to I want to go to this play on campus. Okay. Well, I'm going to make a friend and see if maybe they want to go, you know, or I'll suggest it to somebody, you know, just yeah. make those little steps towards mm-hmm. that big goal. That's all I would say. Yeah. And uh, when you went, when you first turned 18, you went to college, did you have yeah. already, d- did you decide your major? Did you already have a, like, okay, I'm going to be this? And then after your accident, did you still stay with your same major? Did you change what your career path was? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, so when I went to college, I was a biology pre-med. Uh-huh. Because, I mean, that's what they tell us to do. Right. And so um, I went to school for that. My parents were like, oh, you should be a doctor. So I was like, okay, whatever. So I, I did stick with biology, and I graduated with my bi- biology degree. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't until, like, my senior year where I was like, okay, what the hell am I going to do? I'm not going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a little yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. And so um, I was really trying to figure out, like, what I was going to do. I have limited hand function. I'm in a wheelchair. My mom was like, why don't you do pharmacy? And I was thinking, like, how can I count these pills? Like, my hand, like, I was truly just unsure of what I was going to do. Everybody just seemed like they knew. But yeah. me. And so I remember being in a class, and the teacher put on the board a list of jobs that were related to um, neurology. I was in a neurology class. Mm-hmm. And I, I really liked that class. And, and one career that I saw was speech therapy. And I was like, hmm, I like to talk. You know, it doesn't seem like that physical. Yeah. Right. And so I was like, let me look into speech therapy. And so I learned that a friend of mine is actually a speech therapist. And um, she called me about it. And I was like, oh, I could work with parents. I could work with adults. I could, you know, work at the hospital. I could work at a school. Like, there were so many different settings. And I was like, hmm, I don't have to lift people up. And so that's when I learned about it. But it was already too late. They have, like, a major just for speech therapy. Right. And I was already about to graduate. So yeah. I graduated with my biology degree. And basically, like, had to start over again mm-hmm. and go back to school, like, yeah. turn right back around. So, yeah. yeah, so I did, I did that. Mm-hmm. So. That's good. So I have the biology degree, but I don't use it. Yeah. Uh, no, that's good. Was there any, was there a second choice or it was just always, okay, you know what? I'm going to just go straight with speech pathologist. Um, I didn't have time, girl. No, I mean, oh, I, that was not a, really. I, mean, yeah. I graduated at, like, 24, 25, and. Yeah. I mean, not really. I didn't have any. Other, I mean, there was a laboratory, I guess, but no. I like yeah. people. I want to be around people. So, I mean, I, I did a little bit of work at like a school. I was like a, a what is it called? A substitute teacher uh-huh. for a little bit. Um, okay. And that was cool. But teaching wasn't really for me yeah. either. So, no, speech therapy seemed cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, getting back into the dating aspect, how was that for you? Because. I feel like a lot of people can relate to that mm-hmm. because that's a question that I get asked a lot, but I'm married, so it's kind of hard for me to really, because I didn't really get back out there and, like, started dating. So, like, how was that for yeah. you, like, getting back out there, meeting new people, and, like, pretty much, I, I mean, because everybody, I mean, because they see the wheelchair. So, like, how was yeah. that for yeah. you? Dating was hard. Dating was hard. Dating was really hard, okay? Um, I struggled a lot. I have so many dating stories. It's ridiculous. But um, I met guys in person. Yeah. Um, and some of them were great and some of them weren't. Uh, I did a lot of dating online. Okay. Um, when I was in college, I made a lot of mistakes. 
I think um, what kind of helped me in the beginning was that I got to know guys, you know, just based on personality and who they were. And, yeah. and guys weren't really like, sleeping with me because I wasn't comfortable with my body. You know, when I was in high school, I was doing crazy stuff, you know, sleeping with guys, and then they didn't respect me after. But with, you know, with the wheelchair, I felt like, I, I mean, I knew I wasn't having sex. I wasn't, I wasn't comfortable. I was still wearing yeah. diapers and nobody was seeing what was under here. Yeah. So guys were respectful of me. They weren't getting anything out of me. So that was nice. But I think eventually they just got tired. You know what I mean? Because I wasn't giving them anything. And yeah. so um, dating was really hard. I wasn't comfortable with myself in the very beginning. Um, and so when I finally did get more comfortable with myself, I mean, dating was still difficult because then I dealt with guys that now are intimidated because I have a degree and, you know, I am more independent and I don't really need guys to do stuff. I don't date for that. You know what I mean? Um, so I deal with, I deal with a little bit of that, you know, the wheelchair is an issue sometimes and then it can be like, oh, well, like I'm never going to make the same money you make or make, you know, so it's a little bit of that. But in the beginning, it was difficult. I met some good guys. Um that were respectful of me um and it was nice but um i met some trash guys too you know um but i I felt like i was never really 100 percent transparent with them yeah in the beginning just as far as like bowel programs and like bladder i never really felt 100 percent comfortable talking to them about it it's hard to um, share stuff like that it's hard it's hard mm-hmm. trust, trust me I, it's hard yeah. to share stuff like that with anybody you know yes yeah. So for sure. I could definitely for understand, sure. you know, you meeting somebody new and you know, you're 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 unsure where it's gonna go, you know. So yeah, you know, you yeah, you don't wanna divulge all this stuff, you know, your bowel program, you know, how you cast, like exactly. all this stuff. So you're kinda like, you know, secretive in a way, you know, and yeah. you're not opening but up. But I felt like yeah. yeah. You just don't wanna open up. But I, I just felt like a lot of the times, um, it'd be nice in the beginning and then it wouldn't work out either because able-bodied girl would get their attention yeah. or um i felt like i would date guys that were down you know what i mean like i felt like i was more compassionate than i would have been had i been walking you know what i mean? I was more understanding okay. of the guy who didn't have a car yeah. or a guy who you know didn't have whatever you know because i'm like oh, i'm in a wheelchair you know he has to deal with this so you know i guess i can put up with this you know but then that wouldn't work out because it would just be an issue we can't both not have cars yeah you know so that would be an issue. So I, I, I felt like I wasn't dating guys that, uh, I, I just felt like I just didn't have standards, but I was dating early on. I was kind of dating whatever, whoever. Yeah. Um, and so that was a little bit of a challenge. But it wasn't until years later, you know, a lot of Oprah, a lot of mm-hmm. just listening to podcasts, a lot of, you know, like, yeah. know your worth, honey. Yeah. You know, a lot of seeing my friends with guys um, and having families. And then mm-hmm. I'm just like, you know what? I'm not dating trash. I mean, yeah. I'm not doing that. You know, you just oh. something just like, you know what? No, I'm not going to go on a date with this guy no matter what. Like, mm-hmm. I don't care if I'm by myself. I'm going to wait. Mm-hmm. You know, so, but in the beginning, yes, I made a ton of mistakes. Okay, now, oh. now there's this term that I learned at the Rolex experience. All right. I want to know have you ever had okay. this happen to you? Because I guess this is something that happens more so for women than for guys. All right. There's this term mm-hmm. called devotee. All right. Have you ever heard of what that before? Called? Devotee. Say It's called devotee. Oh yeah, I heard of devotee. Yeah. Oh okay. Well, I guess me. I guess me. I, I didn't. I didn't know about that until the, the the girls mentioned it, and I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. I like. like yeah. So have you ever like? I guess. I guess. Have you ever? Have you ever had that type of scenario happen with you? As far as like having like a devotee. Um, or can you, no. oh, sorry, well, before you say your thoughts, for the people out there, what is devotee? Is it, I don't even know how yes. to say Okay, Kimberly. For, pe- you know, yeah. for the well, YouTube video, you know, YouTube audience, what, what is devotee? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, to me, a devotee is somebody that's um, devoted to wheelchair users. So they have an interest, a very high interest mm-hmm. in people in wheelchairs. Mm-hmm. That, that's my understanding of devotees. It's, it's almost like an obsession. Yeah. Uh, with people, and I won't even just say wheelchairs, but um, because I feel like devotees can apply to anything, like you know, almost like yeah. a fetish mm. right. for you know people in this situation for people that are in wheelchairs. But I know yeah. that there's devotees for amputees, mm. 
de- you know, devotees for, you know, feet. Mm-hmm. So, but I think in this situation, it's somebody that just has a, has a fetish for yeah. wheelchair users. I would, like, so, I think I kind of classified yeah. it as like a disability stalker. That's kind of how I would <laughs> like, like. Even better. I love it. Yeah, like somebody who just stalks people with disabilities and like they're just infatuated yeah. by them. So that's kind of how I took it in whenever we heard it and learned it because I guess a lot of the women at the Rolex Experience, they had this problem. I never knew it was really a problem. Like, I mean, I know people have stalkers, but I didn't know that it was a big thing, like how it was. Like there was a guy that they had to kick out at the Rolex Experience, right? Or was yeah. it the year before that they said? I don't know. They had mentioned a story about they had to kick a guy out. Yeah. <laughs> So. Yeah, so so yes, yeah, yeah. So I didn't, I didn't. Me as a guy, I really just didn't know that there was a thing. But I'm guessing it's more so. Yeah, the but guys, I think that's Yeah. Mm, I mean, I've you I've might. had I've had somebody ask me to be they sugar baby. I guess <laughs> I get you know, yeah. So, but but I guess it's more so like guys that are the devotees for women. Yeah, yeah. So but there's some female ones too. Oh, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I've never had. I mean, now that I've, I've I've been doing more social media over the years, yeah. you know, I didn't do social media for showing like my wheelchair experience mm-hmm. in the beginning at all. But um, like in the last two years or so, I've been sharing more. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, my DMs are like filled with people that are like, "Oh, I love your wheelchair. I love you, princess." You know, like yeah. all this stuff. And I'm just they're just saying a lot of comments about yeah. being in a wheelchair. Like, wow, okay. Oh. So I learned about it doing more social media but i did not know about the term for yeah. a long time mm-hmm. yeah, i had no idea yeah okay you know but what? i didn't know what people had said it yeah you know what now that i think about it when i first started doing vlogs i did have one i had to block him all right i had to block him yes he asked me to send a picture of my legs i had to block him what? yes now, now, Yo, now they get sneaky it. too yes Yo, they get they get mad sneaky because somebody <laughs> sent me a message and was like oh like my sister has spasms and can you just show me a video real quick and so I can show her so she doesn't know that she's not alone. And it, it was like me doing social media in the beginning. So I was right. just trying to be super nice and friendly to everybody. Like, right. Yeah. You know, to every, you know, cause I was just trying to be nice to the people, you yeah, know? Exactly. Um, uh, no, that was not my, my boyfriend was like, well, what are you doing? He's not real. He does not have a sister. This is for him. Like he's jacking off to this. And I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah. You know, <laughs> Mm-hmm. No, one of the Wait, girls at the Rolex experience said that as well. One of, one of the girls at the Rolex experience, she said the same thing that that a guy asked no. for like a video of her catheter or something like that, wasn't it? No, I think it was uh, some a guy had sent this girl a DM saying, "Hey, can you send me?" I I guess they wanted to learn how she did bowel care. And he, I don't oh. know, was it something? It was a. I don't know. It was, it was how something your bowel along program, those lines. How she does bowel program, how she does her bowel mm-hmm. program. But I'm just like, you're not going to send yeah. that video. Yeah, that's, yeah, you know what? Right. Baby, it's I'm sorry, sneaky. man. The, yeah. the World Wide Web exists. You can Google exactly. that. Exactly. Exactly. And that's something that, that you kind of should learn in therapy as well. Mm-hmm. You know, like physical yeah. therapy. Like, right. like, that's something that you need to be learning in the hospital, you know, before you even yeah. get released. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. You, you got to watch out. Some odd- Yes. Yeah, for sure. I've gotten some questionable messages. One girl was like, you know, I was just in an accident. How did, you know, what do I do? It was just like weird questions. And I'm like, girl, like, I would not be thinking about all this if I was just injured. Like, she was just saying a lot of stuff and it just wasn't adding up. Right. It was just, some people get really creative with getting information from yes. you, trying to pose like a wheelchair user it, or a person with disability. And it's like, yeah. gosh, like people get scared. You've done it. It really yeah. is. Okay, so yeah. I heard you talk about you got kicked out the Shepherd Center earlier. All right, if you want to share how you got kicked out, we definitely want to know how you yeah. got kicked out the Shepherd Center. You know, for I anybody know. that's it's going, so, you know, so they don't make the same mistake. Yeah, so let us know when yeah, you got sure. there, no. how long you were there. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. No, that's good. No, for sure. This is to help people. Um, dang, I've never told this. I was so embarrassed. Okay, so uh, I went to the Shepherd Center for phase two. Now this was like five or six years until my injury, right? Okay. I've been injured that long. So I went back to the Shepherd Center because I was trying to learn how to drive. I was trying to work on, what was my goal? Um, I think trying to make a bed, like be more yeah. independent. Okay. So I was there and the rule for going back was that you had to have somebody there with you. You couldn't just leave. They give you an apartment okay. to stay in basically. Like you're not in the hospital. You're in an apartment that's connected to the Shepherd Center. So okay. it's, it's kind of dope. You get your own bed, like your own room. Anyway, 
So I broke number one rule with having somebody there because my mom and dad were not there. I didn't bring anybody. They started out there, but then they went back to Texas. Okay. And the separate center for people that don't know is in Atlanta, Georgia. Right. Mm-hmm. So I was staying in Atlanta, mm-hmm. this whole state by myself. Mm-hmm. And so that was mistake one. And so they told me I was going to be there for a month. So I was there two weeks. And the time that I was there, I was going out, y'all, every <laughs> night after rehab. I was, like, going out on the town. I was making friends. I was on dating apps, like, meeting up with people. Ain't like, I was life. getting my whole life. And I was telling my therapist, and they were like, oh, that's so dope. Like, you know, I was just living my life. And so, um, but I would come back to therapy tired. I would skip. And they were giving me warnings, like, you know, they called me to the office, like, you know, you can't be missing therapy. You have to. And I was just like, oh, okay, I'm going to get it together. But I was like, my stomach was fucked up because I was like, I was, I was a vegetarian at that time, too. But when I was in Atlanta, I was eating everything like me. And it was just fucking me up. And so I would not be able to get to therapy. And so final straw, um, I was in aquatic therapy, got out of therapy. And they called me to the office and they were like, you've been missing too much. You got to go home. Like, you're done. And I have two weeks left. And they were like, you got to leave in like, two, like tomorrow. So, and I'm like, dang, I'm in a state by myself. Like, I was so scared. My mom was actually in Mexico. And so I was just like, oh, like, you know, I'm re- I really did it too. Like, you know, like I'm in trouble. Yeah. And so um, I had a friend actually that was coming to visit me. He was flying in that day. Oh, like, I, I was just like, it was so bad. Yeah. And so they were like, yeah, you got to go. Like, pack your shit up. Like until you can really be responsible, and you know, because people want to go to the Shepherd Center and really take it seriously. Yeah. And so my friend arrived. He came in, and I was like, "Yo!" And I actually had catheters that were being shipped to the Shepherd Center too that next day. Like it was all crazy. Yeah. I had to go back up there, you know, after I'd been kicked out to get my catheters. Um, but I ended up staying in Atlanta. My mom was like, "You need to come home and think about what you did." And I was yeah. like, "I got no. I'm staying here." So I ended up getting a hotel. And the guy that I was seeing in Atlanta, he, like, helped me move out of the Shepherd Center. I stayed in a hotel. I got my whole life with him for a week. We hung out. My friend that flew in hung out with us. Like, it ended up being good. Yeah. But, like, still, I was really embarrassed. I was kicked yeah. out. Yeah. You know, I haven't been back since. Mm, I don't okay. know. I mean, I'm sure the Shepherd Center, they don't care anymore. It was years ago. This is probably, right. like, 2016 mm-hmm. to 2022 now. But, okay. y'all, yeah. Yeah. I think I kicked out. That's okay. What okay. happened? So, uh-huh. for those that are listening, yeah, whenever you go to rehab, just do what you're supposed to do. I mean, yeah. have fun, yes, but so up on time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? These therapists got to get paid. Like, you're messing up their money. If you're not making progress, then they can't keep you on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If, mm-hmm. if you're not going to your therapy and doing your stuff. So, yeah. do your therapy. Go there. Have fun, too. Yes. But, yeah. like, do what you got to do. Yeah. Take care of your responsibilities. So, and, and that's, that's one- what happened. But that's one thing that I try to recommend to everybody is when you in therapy, take it serious because a lot of people, you know, they ask me, hey, man, like, damn, I just I want to get to where you at. I see what you're doing, man. Like, how can I get there? And, and I like it starts with taking therapy serious. Like I had like I had to. Again, I can relate to you. My dad left his job, never went back. My dad was my caregiver, you know, so like literally my dad was with me. My dad took me to all my appointments. He took me to therapy everything and yeah. and like I it was like I it, I had to do it because I realized that the like that they're gonna have to go on with their life and like did this yeah. is gonna be my yeah. life so I took everything serious that I felt like I needed to at the time now did I take yeah. everything serious no I didn't but looking back on it it's just I took seriously what I needed like like at the time see see for guys it's hard to want to do bowel care it's hard to want to calf so i'm having accidents i'm wearing diapers all this type of stuff because i don't want to use this catheter it's, you know like it's, it's just 14 inch thing i'm sticking up you know there and you know, i gotta stick my finger in my butt you know for bowel care. Know. it's it's, yeah. it's it was really hard to get the mindset that i had to do it but then oh, once yeah. I, but once i realized like damn like i like you know me and her was going out to the mom having accidents. You know, it's just it's just like damn. You know, like going somewhere now. I want to go home. Like, and it's just ruined everything. And it's just like you know yeah. what? I gotta I, I gotta take this seriously. So you know, yeah. I ended up back yeah, in the yeah. hospital, not taking stuff serious. I was in the hospital for a yeah. while, and then they taught me. Yeah. They, they taught us how to do bowel care. They taught us how to do everything. 
And yeah. from there, I took it serious. And then, yeah. you know, we was able to move out here to California after that. We moved out here to California. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, pretty yeah. much I've been living an independent lifestyle ever since. They taught her how to do my bowel right. care. Right. And she, okay, was doing, yeah. she, she was doing my bowel care for like. How long do you think he was doing it for? Like six oh, wow. months? Six months. I would say six months to a year. Mm -hmm. And then it was just like, I got to a point where it's just like, you know what? I want to be able to do it myself. And then yeah. and then I started doing it. So I, I was like, you know what? Let me do it myself one day. And then from there, I did it. Yeah. Yeah. From there, I never stopped. So I do bow care myself every yeah. day. Yeah. So it just, you know, it was it was. But it starts day. therapy. You got to take it that does. seriously. It oh, does. People yeah. want to see, they see the end result, where we are yes. now. But it's like, oh, you're yes. missing all these steps. Like yeah. we, we had to do this stuff to get to this point. You know what I mean? Mm. And it was a lot of sacrifices, a lot yes. of time that it took. You know what I mean? Mm. A lot of trial and error for sure. Like exactly. for me, it was just like me getting pissed off at something, like me and my mom getting into it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just try my own catheter. I'm going to try and do it myself. And you know, I found that I could do it. Mm. You know what I mean? Just practicing, you know, using yeah. whatever anger you got towards the situation and like try and work on the skill. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just work yourself. And, you know? and that's how it was and, for me and, and my dad on. too. Go ahead. That's how it was for me and my dad too. We got arguing, you know, all the time. It, it was very frustrating. Right. It's it's, it's yeah. frustrating because you feel like can't nobody can relate to you. Nobody can relate to what you're going through. Nobody can relate to how you feel. Having to yeah. do all these things different is like no, like you just feel like nobody can relate to you. But then again, that yeah. comes with. You know, you got to be more accepting of networking with people that are in the same situation yeah. as you or in similar situations. Mm -hmm. You know, like for me, mm -hmm. uh, for me, my my uncle was in a wheelchair. He got paralyzed around pro uh, probably almost around the same age as me, and he reached out to me. But again, I didn't I didn't want to accept anything. I didn't pick up his phone call. I didn't want to talk to anybody in a wheelchair. And then he ended up passing yeah. away like a few months later, and it was one of the biggest mm -hmm. regrets. I felt like, you know. It was just one of my biggest regrets because I felt like I I really could have just you know picked up some game from him or really just yeah, talked to him. Had that man. connection. With him. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So. Yeah. 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 No, I get you. I know. And and going off what you said earlier about you know how people our parents have to go on with their lives you know yeah. and and that's something that's always in my head you know that's kind of so sometimes I think about like why I push myself so hard why do I have this drive and it's like because our our parents will not be here you yeah. know what I mean. You know, you know, I hope to God that that happens to your wife, but she may not be here. You know what I mean? And it's like, you got to be able to figure it out. Even if we cannot do it ourselves, mm. we got to know, like, who to go to, what to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's not, not everybody is able to do it. You know, okay. that. you know, not everybody in a wheelchair can do that. But they need to understand, like, who to go to, mm. what resources they have, you know. Yeah. Like, that's my biggest thing. Cause, I mean, if anything ever happened to my parents, you know, I'm not so dependent on them. But sometimes I do need them in an emergency yeah. situation. If something happened, I'm like, damn, like, what am I going to do? You know, like, yeah. I'm a boyfriend, but hell, he's just a boyfriend. You know, I don't yeah. know what can happen. And so yeah. it's just good to know what to do and, and just be able to do what you can for yourself or educate other people mm. on how to help you, you know? Yeah. Man, you just need to spread out. You know? Time is limited. Yeah. <sighs> I agree. And, and also, when it came to me, like having to learn all this stuff, I was really depressed. I was really like it. It was like I didn't really want to take in any information, so I was like down for like forever. But again, like you just gotta you gotta take that you gotta take that therapy serious. All right, like mm -hmm. I can't harp on it enough. Like everything I do every single day that people see me do that they ask questions about. It all revolves around therapy, what I did in therapy. They say, man, I want to drive yeah. again. Well, I, look, I got to do a transfer to get in the car. Something I learned at therapy. All right, is mm -hmm. it, all of it related. I transfer to get out the car. It's yeah. so many transfers. Like, yeah. I, I got to do push-ups in the car, you know? And yeah. I just yeah. tell everybody, look, For take sure. take therapy serious. Take it know? seriously and break up those steps. You know, I, I know a girl that wanted to live on her own so badly yeah. and move, but then she couldn't get in the bed by herself. She didn't know how to cook. And it's like you missing yeah. those steps, boo. Like you gotta be able to do these certain things. Like if you can't shower, have somebody schedule a time with somebody can come there and help you or, or be able to mm -hmm. get in the bed on your own or be able to, you know, have it figured yeah. out before you just jump out there mm -hmm. and, and do those things, you know. All those steps matter. You know, therapy, like you said, it matters. Yeah. All those goals tell you therapist, okay, this is a goal of mine. Make that a goal and, and work on that, you know. Exactly. If you can't do the transfer, 
go to the gym and work on strengthening. You know what I mean? Or yeah. get a sliding board if you can't lift yourself. Yeah. You know, but um, people just don't so focus on it. those steps. Yeah. And, and also, don't be afraid to ask for help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Because I know for it's. Sure. I still, I, I still struggle like with it. You said what? Yeah, me too. Me too. Because I'm not the one. Like I, I will struggle. And it, my sister always says, "Tim, you need to work, work smarter, not harder." But I'm like, I'm not. I just don't like to give somebody the satisfaction of knowing they help me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I hate and that's terrible. Don't listen to me, people. Yeah. Don't be like, be better than me. Because I'm yeah. sure life could have been a little bit easier. But I just don't like people to be like, yeah, well, I'm doing that for you. As soon as I feel it, like, and it's a lot for me to ask you. But if I, like, say, can you help me with this? And they just, they just make a big deal about it. It's like, you know what? Never mind. You know what I just I just hate giving somebody that. But don't be afraid to ask for help, people. Yeah, exactly. Okay? And then, and then don't, also, don't be afraid. So, and then also one thing you yeah. said earlier, people want to help. You know, like, yeah. like, so it's just, you know, and that's one thing I really kind of had to learn. Like, sometimes, like, people people want to help. You know, like, look, if, if, if I can't grab that off the top shelf, maybe I might have to ask somebody in the store, hey, excuse me, can you grab that for me? And, you know, yeah, they want to yeah, yeah. help you. So, you know. They want to help. That's yeah. true. That's true. They want to help. They do. People people want to be a part of it. I was getting in my car the other day, and I, and I have to be better about asking for help, but um, I was getting in the car the other day. And um, this man came up. He was like, um, let me help you. And it wasn't like, do you need help? But it was like, let me help you and push himself on me. And that's what I don't like. I can't mm-hmm. take these just assume I need you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it's fine. Ask me. And I feel like that's important, too. People need to ask. Yeah. You know, because maybe I don't want help this day. But tomorrow, sure. Like, I might be mm-hmm. tired. Mm-hmm. I might need you. But it's like, please ask me. Don't just, yeah. I hate people just push me. Like, I need you. Like, they're about to save the day. And it's like, yeah. boo. Like, I got here so now. Mm-hmm. You know, but at the same time, talking to people that are really injured and still trying to figure it out, mm-hmm. that's okay to ask for help. Like, if, and, and I feel like people get wrapped up sometimes in seeing people like us or mm-hmm. people like the Rolex doing big, big things. And it's like, mm-hmm. they just forget that. Like, we also needed help. We started, we didn't start like this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. We didn't have what we have now. No, we started at the very beginning trying to get where we are now. We had we needed a lot more help. So I think people forget that. And, and obviously, they don't see it now because we're not there anymore. But mm-hmm. I feel like us saying that is a good reminder for people to know that it's okay to need help. You know, it's really okay. I still need help. I can't always get my wig the way I want it to work. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Or I need somebody to hand me something. Or yeah. just washing my hair. My mom still has to help me. And it's, it's okay, you know? Yeah. We all need it. Question. Okay, so do yes. you drive yourself? I like, do, girl. You do? Okay. And mm-hmm. what did you learn how to drive? Like, was it scary? Um, well, yeah, I actually learned how to drive. I was 29 when I got my license again. So I didn't drive for a good 10, 11 years. Ooh, okay. uh, with, you know, a lot of wheelchair users get their license like a year after or you know, no, not me. My family didn't want me to drive. Uh-huh. So I had to do a lot of like relying on other people, coordinating schedules. Yeah. So it took me some years. Uh, but yeah, I got my license again at 29. So that's good. Yeah. And trust me, I know how it feels. Yeah. I know how it feels because it took me, took me a few years to get my license. Yeah. And she drove me everywhere. <laughs> and you know, I really? also had, I had to rely on my sister, my brother in law, my dad. And. Mm-hmm. Me getting my license was one of the biggest things that uh, helped me get my independence back. Um, as as far as like just sure. you know just being able to get up and go somewhere, mm-hmm. you know get up mm-hmm. to, you know go to the store. Sometimes she asked me, Becky, go to the store, and then like you know like like yeah, like sometimes I might not want to, but it feels good that she can ask me to do it. You know, because you know yeah. like you would just ask a regular person, hey, can you go to the store for me? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And you right. know it feels good and. Again, it just it, it, look. It goes back to that therapy as well. You gotta take therapy seriously yeah. if you want to get there. Like you said, people see the For end sure. result. Yeah, absolutely, so. absolutely. I still like even some days I'm like driving and I'm like, oh, I don't feel like driving. But I I go back to that girl that wanted it so badly. Yeah. I she's never far. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like people just think like, oh, like you know, life's great now. And it's yeah. like that little girl that was initially hurt. Like I think about her every day. I think about I'm driving, I'm tired of him, but I think about how hard I wanted, how hard I worked, 
yeah. for this. And so, like, I just don't take any of it for granted. And I appreciate it all the time. And so, mm-hmm. I think for people also that are watching and think it's not going to happen, mm-hmm. you've got to give yourself time and be so patient yes. with yourself. Right. You know, mm-hmm. like, it, it takes, it's, it's not overnight. It's going to take a while, but don't give up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. Don't, don't think it's not, not going to happen because you're seeing somebody else, you know, moving faster than you. So what? Yeah. You know, that's their journey. You have your own, you know what I mean? It don't happen when it's supposed to, Mm -hmm. not any sooner, but it'll happen when it's supposed to. Sometimes I think like, God probably didn't want me to drive a little sooner because my mind wasn't right and I probably wasn't going to do the right thing. You know what I mean? Sometimes I think like that, like it wasn't, it wasn't meant for me at that time, you know, for whatever reason, but it happened at that time. So Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now... I oh, uh, we ain't gonna keep you too much longer, but I know you probably just seen me stutter right there. Uh, <laughs> um, since you've been in a wheelchair, has there been anybody on social media that you felt like that you've looked up to, like that's a woman or you know, or a man? Uh, like who was like one of the biggest inspirations on social media for you? Because you got paralyzed Ooh. in two thousand nine, correct? Yeah, oh nine. Okay, that's right. I, I got paralyzed in two thousand twelve. When I got paralyzed. There, social media wasn't like how it is now. It's not like you could go on. At and some, all. Yeah, it's not like you can go in there and see somebody in a wheelchair doing things. Mm-hmm. All right, so I know it probably took a little while for you to really find somebody on social media that you could look up to or that you know looked like you or yeah. you know had the same hand function as you or the same you know injury as mm-hmm. you. Like, was there anybody that you looked up to or look up to now that was one of your biggest inspirations that you know? you know, th- that you would love to meet one day or, you know, just d- d- yeah. just somebody that you look up to? Yeah, yeah. No, um, I say that all the time. I'm like, you newly injured people are so lucky yeah. that you guys have people to look at. Like, I see people that have been injured a year or two and they already got their routine working out, eating healthy. I'm like, hey. yep. like I was not person cute. I didn't have none of that. Yeah. Um, But no, to answer your question, <laughs> um, I would say Chelsea Hill. Chelsea, Absolutely. okay. We were injured. Like a year apart. I think she was injured in 2010. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I was injured in 09. And I remember um, being in therapy when Push Girls came out. Mm. And my therapist was like, oh, they got this new show coming on Sunday. And, you know, it's a girl in a wheelchair. You should check it out. Mm-hmm. And I remember being glued to the TV. Wow. Like, oh, these girls are hot. They look good. You know, they are doing <laughs> their damn thing. And Chelsea's a parent. I'm a quad. Yeah. But I was, I remember her being newly injured on the show. Yeah. And, um, just following her journey you know I, mm-hmm. I wasn't on social media like I am now mm-hmm. um, I was kind of off and on but um just seeing her do all these things going dating and living her life and now having a Rolex I was so inspired by her mm-hmm. and I, I really looked up to her um mm-hmm. you know seeing her on tv sharing her story being close to my age I think we're maybe a year apart I think I'm like a year older than her yeah. but um but yeah I absolutely was inspired by her okay. for sure and then after learning about her then I learned about um uh, you walk, I glide. I, I call people by their Instagram name. Mm, right. Um, yeah. you, you walk, I glide. Um, Stephanie, I think it's her name. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I remember uh, seeing her. I don't remember how, but I came across her page. I was like, what? She's a, a quad like me. Yeah. She likes fashion. And she's, you know, mm-hmm. cool. And, you know, somebody I could relate to. Because, you know, a lot of the times people think, like, we're all in wheelchairs. We all should be best friends. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, not really. I feel like if we have a connection, if I would hang out with you before my accident, then and I probably want to be your friend now. But I, it's not like I'm saying I, I don't want to be friends with, you know, everybody in wheelchairs. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying, like, just because we're all in wheelchairs doesn't necessarily mean that we have to all like, be close friends. You know, mm-hmm. if we have the connection, that's fine. Yeah. But um, when I saw You Walk I Glide, I was like, oh, I absolutely would love to meet her. I feel like I can relate to her. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what I'm saying. So... With you walk as I absolutely looked up to her. She was a role model for me, um, and just being comfortable with myself and wanting yeah. to rescue. Yeah. Um, and Chelsea Hill for sure. So those two definitely. Yeah, those say. two definitely Played killing it. They're, they're, yeah, they're definitely killing for it all sure. across yeah. the board. So yeah, that's dope. Mm-hmm. That's dope. That's dope because I feel like I feel like right now what what. I feel like I'm building up. I'm building up something for the men because I feel like that the men don't really have a lot out there like how the females do. You know, men aren't as social as women as well, you know. I but, agree. But me going to the Rolex experience and seeing, you know, just experiencing that was, like I said, it was eye-opening. It's definitely something that I yeah. recommend to you. And I was, look, me and her was only there for a couple hours, and it oh, yeah. was, and it was, 
like I said, it was it was really amazing. So definitely recommend. Aww. Yeah, I definitely recommend the Rolex experience. And yeah, I, de- I, de- I, would I, go. Yeah. I so I I definitely got to do something for the guys out there because you know I I said something about it on Instagram and a lot of the guys said yeah, but I feel like it's a lot harder than what you know than just saying it. You know, like. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. So, but there will be something, maybe yeah. virtual or, or yeah. meet up somewhere. I don't know, like a mm-hmm. men's retreat, retreat or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we can start it off virtual, but no, the men definitely need something for sure. I know, I know a couple guys um, in wheelchairs, and you know they're dealing with a lot, and I can't always help them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But a, a lot of the dating is difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the self esteem difficult. So yeah, that would be good. And you're you're in located in Houston right now, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm still in Houston. Okay. And what are some things that you like to do out there for anybody out there visiting that you know might go to Houston, Texas? What are some you know things that you would recommend Ooh. to go to? Or even okay, that's good. Go to, you know. Yes. Okay. Um. Well, for anybody that hasn't been to Houston before, I mean, we're a big city, but Houston is so okay. there's lots of barbecue here. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of brunch spots, bars, uh, mm-hmm. for instance. Hmm. I would say we've got the turkey leg hunt. Everybody talks about the turkey leg hunt. Um, that's okay. a big deal here. Um, there's a lot of soul food places. I mean, me, I'm a creature of habit, so I just kind of go to the same places. Yeah. Um, but like brunch spots, like they have this area that's like for young people, the Heights area. They have like Midtown, so they got a lot of bars and places. Mm-hmm. Um, specific names I can't think of at the top of my head. Right. Mm-hmm. But um, but no, it's a lot of food places. If you like to eat food, come to Houston. If you like shopping, um, if you like museums, I got tons of museums here. Um, what else? If you're dating, they got a lot of guys here, a lot of women. You know, mm-hmm. you're okay. interested in that. It's a lot of people here in Houston. It seems like people keep moving here, yeah. um, all the time. Uh, what else? If you're looking for a job, and a lot of jobs out here too. So there's that part of it. And yeah, the, the living is not as expensive as California yeah. out there on the West Coast. I know. Yeah. It's, it's everything and pretty much doubled in price out here. So yeah, it's, I know. it's definitely getting very expensive out here. Mm-hmm. Okay. What made you guys want to move to California? I have family out here in California. So we, we met, we, you know, we met in high school when we went to school in Georgia. Mm-hmm. So I moved out mm-hmm. here after mm-hmm. high school. In 09, I moved after I graduated, and then Kevin ended up staying in Georgia. We were still kind of young. We were, you know, I was 17. Yeah. Kevin was 18. Oh, okay. yeah. So my parents were not going to let me stay in Georgia with my boyfriend. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah. Um, and then Kevin ended up moving out yeah. here. Yeah. And then I did, well, I stayed, in, I stayed in Texas for a while because that's where I went to basic. I went to basic training in San Antonio. So my basic training and my tech school was in San Antonio. Mm. So that's where I was at for about like mm-hmm. I would say like nine months. And that, uh, again, again, that was the first time I got to try like brisket, try tip, all like those types of barbecue. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so, so, yeah. I, so I definitely that's know barbecue. a little bit about the food. I definitely know about the food a little yeah, bit. No, the yeah, the food is good. Have, have you um been to Houston? No, never been, to Houston. been to Houston. We've never been to Houston. Yeah. No. Never been to Houston. Yeah, y'all gotta come out to Houston for oh, sure. No. I was for a long time. I wanted to move to California. Yeah. Uh, and every now and then I'm like, oh, I still want to take a. I was thinking about taking a job out there, maybe for a year to okay. just see. But it is expensive. Yeah. Golly. Yeah. But but it's amazing out here though. It is amazing. Like for no, somebody, like she kept telling me, "Look, you gotta come to California." And I did not want to come. I didn't want to leave Georgia. And she's like, "No, you gotta come yeah. out here." And then she she moved down to Georgia for a little bit, mm-hmm. and then. We ended up moving to California. We t- we pretty much just took the leap, moved to California. We found an really? apartment. Yes, and it was it was it was a big thing because we had to find the apartment wasn't handicap accessible, but we I wanted mm-hmm. it to be like uh, like I would say like big enough to where like I didn't have a problem like getting in, so I could extra space. Yeah, so all I had to do was get like a shower chair, and then I could just transfer into the yeah. shower, and that was like one of the right. biggest things was just finding a place that you know on the first floor. You know, like that's a big thing because you know, most of the time when people get apartments, a lot of people want to get the first floor. They don't want to have to go up mm-hmm. any steps. You know, older people they want to get the first floor. But it just so happens yeah. that the apartments that we moved into were like literally just built. Like literally, they literally just finished the apartments right when we got there. Like it was only like a handful of people even living there. 
So we so we was able to get uh, an apartment there on the first floor, and uh, from there yeah. we just yeah, from there we just you know. been there a few years. Oh no, we we lived in the apartment for what like two years. Yeah, I think it was like two. We were go- yeah. we were going to almost on three, but they kept increasing the the rent. Yeah. We we're like, oh no, because mm. they were going crazy. Yeah. So mm. they do. Yeah, like we gotta get out of here. And then we was like, yeah. So, so they was kind of like luxury apartments, and my dad was like, Mm -hmm. "Well, look, what you paying for rent in that apartment? You could be putting that towards a house." And then that was Mm -hmm. the first time I really started looking for a house. So we started looking for a house. Uh, We didn't find anything. And again, looking for a house, it was the same thing. You really had to find something that was one level wheelchair um, accessible. Yes, well, you ain't really gonna find any house that's wheelchair accessible, but something that's that's accessible for you, you know? So, so it was, so again, you know, we had to keep going up in value because, you know, one, one, the houses that are all on one level, those are more expensive than Mm -hmm. the houses that are kind of stacked. So it was just, yeah. So it it took us a while. It took us a while Mm -hmm. and we had to stop looking. And then, uh, then I think we was on a month to month. I think we was on a month to month. Uh, and Mm -hmm. then, but the month to month was like, what was it? at that time at that time it was like 1750 so 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 oh. it, but we started off at 1450 right and then it was 1750 oh. yes so mm-hmm. then like we started looking for a house again and it took us like i was almost a year that we found our house and that's where we've been at ever since nice yeah so you guys are home owner. that's awesome yeah, yeah. so really good. yeah it was one of the it was that's one, what of, I wanna do one of the best things that we could have ever did and definitely one of the biggest investments because our house actually doubled in value, so <laughs> it went it went up double. So well, wow, the, the way awesome. the market is now, yeah, yeah, hopefully yeah. it stays like that. Mm-hmm. Well, that's huge. Yeah, but it was literally we bought the right property at the right time in the right location. So you yeah. know, it's a desirable location. Yeah. It's a good neighborhood, gated community. Uh, that's really good. I feel like I needed to hear that testimony because yeah. that's why I moved out of my apartment. I was there two years, mm-hmm. and then I was like, oh my god, I'm paying so much money. Mm-hmm. Like almost sixteen hundred dollars to live yeah. here, like it's ridiculous. And they're going up in rent, and I was like, you know, I'm gonna move back home for a little bit, save money, yeah. and then I, I want to buy a house eventually. I don't know if I'm ready. Mm-hmm. But I have friends that have bought homes as single people. You yeah. know, they're not necessarily married. And I know I can do it, mm-hmm. but I kind of want to wait. You know, to be married to do it. Yeah. Um, but I also tired of paying rent. I'm so tired of yeah. you know expensive apartments and putting money into something that I'm not getting back. Put yeah. money in somebody else's pocket that is paying the exactly. mortgage. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Right. So for anybody that's newly injured, what what type of information would you like to give them? You know, like like looking back on it, like for somebody that's newly injured, like what type of information could you like give them? Like looking back, and maybe that right you now? wish you also yeah. had. Yeah. 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 No, that's good. Um, newly injured. I got to focus on newly injured. Uh, man, there's so much information. I mean, number one, I would just say is just don't be afraid to speak up for yourself. I feel like that's key, and that's something that's just like lifelong mm-hmm. that we all have to practice. But like, especially newly injured people, don't be afraid. Speak up. Tell people your feelings. Tell people what you're going through. Share because you just don't know um, what other people can help you with as well. And for instance, I went on a push with some people with, with in wheelchairs and um I got really hot. I got um like deathly hot. Like I, I thought I was gonna pass out and the rest of them were fine, no issues and I tried to keep going with the rest of the group. But I was so overheated I thought I was gonna pass out. And so um I'm saying all that to say don't be afraid to tell the group, hey, I can't make it with you guys. I'm um going through this. I'm overheated or I need to take a break and don't feel like you're different than them. Don't feel like mm-hmm. People are going to judge you, and if they do, so be it. But make sure you speak up and tell them, I'm not feeling safe. I'm not feeling my best. Um, and so I would say, speak up for yourself. I also said, don't let other people limit you. Mm-hmm. So if you have a goal, if you have a vision for yourself, Definitely. don't let what other people think you can't do stop you. Yeah. Keep working on it. And even if it doesn't work out, maybe it'll turn into something different. But just don't let other people limit you. And don't limit yourself either. Don't think, like, because I'm in a situation, I can't. Like maybe you can't do it the same way, but yeah. you can do it differently. You exactly. Know? And so just don't be afraid of that as well. Um, and then I would just say also um, find somebody 
um, that you can look up to. You can mold yourself out there. Yeah. You know, there's lots of people online um, that are good role models. Even people that aren't in your situation can be good role models too. Like I, I tell people all the time, Oprah, but I'm not playing. Like, Oprah really changed my life. Like I used to be in the hospital rooms, even at home, like watching Oprah videos. Like she would have guests on there. Like my husband gave me AIDS. And I'm like, oh my God, like I don't have AIDS. Yeah. But I would be like, wow, she made it through that situation. It didn't break her. You yeah. know what I mean? Okay, well, we appreciate you coming on the podcast. You guys know where to find her. Make sure you guys go check out her YouTube channel. And yeah, you have a good one. Thank you, Kelsey. Got to let it go.